of tobacco and liquor control. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by Chris and a second by Richard. Any discussion on the minutes? Are we ready to vote? Yes. Okay, all those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. So, new, new permits. Um, we have nothing for liquor license applications. We have nothing for tobacco license applications. Outside consumption, we have one request. I would entertain a motion for that. Um, this is a tradition for these folks. Uh, I would make the motion to approve Soulmate Brewing Company's um, outside vendor on 928 2024 from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. during October Fest on Portland Street. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by Chris and a second by George. Any discussion? Jason, we're good with this? Yeah, they're fine. Okay, sure. great. Yeah. This is for Soulmate Brewing for Rock Oktoberfest. Okay, all those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. Request a cater permit. We have one application here as well. Pear, Pear Ridge Productions LLC. Do I have a motion? I would move to accept the catering um, permit for Pear Ridge Productions LLC on October 5, 2024 from 5 to 10.30 p.m. for a wedding at 114 Cody, Cody Hill Road. Okay, so I have a motion by Chris. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by Chris, a second by Richard. Any discussion? I assume we're good with this, Jason? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, all those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. <laughs> that would be unanimous. Judy. Am I going slow enough? Am I good? Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn? So moved. I have Sorry. a motion to adjourn. I have a motion by Chris, a second by George. All those in favor of adjournment? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. Judy, I'll give you a second. Yeah. <clears throat> and that closes liquor and tobacco control. All set. Okay. Good evening once again. It's 534. And I'd like to call the Town of Morristown Select Board meeting to order for Monday, September 16th, 2024. Additions and changes. None. So I am going to make one addition and that will go, that will become the new number one under new business. And I'm just going to call it recognition. That's our only change. Uh, minutes, we have minutes from the public hearing on uh, September 3rd. This is for the town plan amendment. I would move to accept the minutes of September 3rd for the um, public hearing on the town plan amendment. So I have a motion by Chris. <clears throat> Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Richard. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of approving the minutes for the town plan amendment public hearing from September 3rd, 2024, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous, Judy. We have minutes from September 3rd, the regular select board meeting. I would move to accept the minutes of the select board meeting on September 3rd, 2024. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by Chris and a second by George. Any discussion? Okay, seeing none. All those in favor of approving the select board minutes from September 3rd, 2024, say aye. 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 And that would be unanimous.
so recognition. So I would like to uh, recognize a, two of our employees that have been honored recently. Uh, they both work in the town clerk's office. Elizabeth Chase received her Vermont Certified, certified Clerk designation and Mitzi Fleming received her Vermont Certified Treasurer designation and that was done at the Vermont Clerks and Treasurers Association annual conference just uh, just recently. So I would like to uh, just take a second and, and uh, recognize them for their hard work and uh, keeping that office running as, as well as it is. So thank you very much to both of them. Thank you folks. Uh, so moving on, decision on the amendment of the town plan. So we have had two public hearings on the town plan, the amendment to the town plan. And uh, at both of those, I did read the previous language, that, which was, uh, which we were planning to strike and the new language. And I'll just ask the board, would you like me to read those paragraphs again? I'm happy to do it. Okay. Personally, I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's necessary. No. Anybody here? Needs that red? Okay. <laughs> so this is uh, just so those folks that haven't been here for those public hearings, this is the transportation chapter. And uh, this amendment will uh, uh, give us a town plan, which we which will go to LCPC, Lamoil County Planning Commission. And uh, we have every reason to believe that they will now uh, accept our town plan and uh, we will have a regional partnership with the rest of the towns in, in Lamont County. So I would uh, take a motion. I would move to accept uh, the proposed amendment for the Morristown, Morrisville town plan. Okay, so I have a motion by Chris. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Richard. Do I have any discussion? Okay. All those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous, Judy. I seconded that. I did. Chris. Okay, um, number two on the paper, but number three, approved the MERP implementation grant. It was, I was looking back on my notes, it was back in August, Brent gave a presentation of this MERP uh, implementation grant. The first thing I'll, first of all, it's significant money, it's, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. It is earmarked for energy efficiency, energy efficiency improvements on this building, on the police building, EMS building, fire building, and it also uh, provides money for ADA, American Disabilities Act, um, improvements on these buildings for that as well. And the good news is there's no match required. This is money that we are getting from the state. Um, LCPC has, uh, I think, worked with various towns in, in Lamal County to, to help garner this money. So it's, it's uh, I was reading through it again today, and. It's been competitive, not everyone's getting it, so we're lucky to get it. And we were, um, you know, pinpointed as a town that, that, that should be getting this money. So we're, we're happy to get it, I'm happy to get it. So I would- uh, Seth is here. Yeah, yeah. Seth, Seth Jensen is here from LCPC, yeah. thank you. If anybody has any questions. I think it's important to note that on the energy resilience uh, program that um, it's $137,214 and, and by implementing these changes in the police department, town office, fire station, and EMS, um, we're looking at an estimated annual cost savings of about $8,751. Um, on the ADA side of the ledger um, for police, town office, fire station, and EMS, um, the uh, grant will provide $9,010 worth of, of improvements. So um, it's significant savings on the energy side and it brings us closer to being ADA compliant. So. Yeah, it's a nice chunk of money for, for the town. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, do I have a motion? Everyone had a question. Oh, let's come up to the microphone, please. I haven't been here in a while. <laughs> Evelyn Throne Morrisville. Um, what particular um, energy savings uh, projects are are outlined or or can be considered on this project? It's so in the police department. They're looking to install a heat pump system for $13,480, install smart thermostats for $630, install 134 feet of door sweeps for $2,493, improve attic insulation for $2,970, install rooftop solar with battery backup for $72,188, and uh, replace some windows for $4,000 in the town office. We're doing 80 feet of door sweeps for 1489. Install smart thermostats for 946. Install a heat pump system for 18,872. Improve attic insulation for 9,440. Uh, in the fire station, they're installing smart thermostats for 1576. Uh, improve insulation for 8,500. And install smart thermostats for 630. And the breakdown um, is. Um, on the ADA piece, I think Laura gave you a copy of that as well. Yeah. yeah so. That's fantastic. Good. Any other questions? Discussion? Okay. I don't think I have a motion yet. Do I? There's one on page twelve for your packet. I would make a motion to approve the uh, MERP information, uh, which is MERP. Implement, implementation grant, which is the uh, Municipal Energy Resilience Program grant, and proceed with uh, priority projects as presented, totaling $137,214 for energy conservation measures, $9,010 for ADA improvements, and any other contingency cost for improvements with zero match from the town, and authorize Brent Raymond to sign the agreement. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by Chris and a second by Richard. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Thank you, Seth. Thank you. Good. So number, number four. Halloween road closures for 2024. I think it's fair to say, talking to friends that live outside of Morrisville, Morrisville has a very successful Halloween and people are very happy to come to Morrisville. I assume that in the recent past, at least road closures, this has gone well. Yeah, it has. I think it's probably been 10 plus years now we've been doing it. It's yeah. It works out really well. And we do have a pretty good police presence that night, correct? Yeah, pretty much everybody that works for the police department's on duty that night, as well as our highway department has usually about eight to ten guys out. So. Yeah. And the, it looks to me like the, the roads that we're going to close are the roads that were, have been typically cl closed in the past. Same ones. Yep. Yeah, it's the same ones, so there's no changes here. And I think I need a motion. So I would move to approve the closing of the following uh, village streets for trick-or-treating on Thursday, October 31st, 2024, from 5 to 7.30 p.m. Those streets include Maple Street, Cherry Ave, Harrison Avenue, Union Street on the easterly side, Summer Street, Court, and Court Street. Okay, so I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by Chris and a second by George. Any further discussion about the Halloween road closures for 2024? Don't come up to the microphone. I'm Jerry Throne of Morrisville. Uh, last year I noticed uh, that the cost of traffic from Maple Street was uh, uh, being detoured, uh, that a lot of people down Congress were uh, speeding. And uh, I'm wondering if there's anything we can do about uh, maybe getting an officer out there uh, during that time period to keep them slowed down, especially since uh, kiddies do uh, trick or treat on, uh, on Congress Street. Okay. Duly noted. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. Any other discussion? 
Okay, so all those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Okay, number five. Assign the town manager as the voting delegate for the election of VLCT directors, the election of uh, PACIF, PASSIF directors, that's our property and casualty insurance company, election to of VERB directors, that's an employment resource and benefits trust company, adopt, and for the adoption of the VLCT municipal policy. So. That is what our town manager is asking. Do I have any discussion or do I have a motion? Uh, I would make a motion. Um, motion to assign town manager <clears throat> Brent Raymond as a voting delegate for election of VLCT directors, election of passive directors, property and casualty, interim municipal fund, Inc., election of verb directors, employment resource and benefits trust, and the adoption of the, the VLCT municipal policy and any other VLCT business. Okay, so I have a motion. Do I have a second? second. So I have a motion by Chris and a second by Richard. Discussion. Um, this is common practice in uh, most municipalities that have a town manager form of government. Uh, we did this in Waterbury, um, and so this is not anything that's unusual. It's just different because we have a town manager now. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Come on up. Introduce yourself, please. David Ring. Uh, could you further define E? Because I don't think you actually talked about that. Or if you did, you changed it. It was it was the in any other VLCT business. That's not what it says. Other business. Would you modify that? It's just motion to say that. Though. Okay. Motion said that. Yeah, it does say other business here, but I, it should I be. Can, I can modify it to say other VLCT. Yeah, because yeah, other business could be wide open. Yeah. Yes, it does on the motion. I agree, David. But it was that part. Was, of, it was part yeah. of the motion. It was part of the motion. Right. Yes. If not part of the motion. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that is part of the motion, other VLCT business. It is. Yeah. yeah. Okay, all those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. 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 And that would be unanimous, Judy. Number five, approve the standard ARPA grant agreement. This is the uh, discussion that we've been having about the stormwater partnership regarding uh, Jersey Heights. We We've already approved as a board taking on this permit. Now what we need to do is just finalize this agreement with the state, the ARPA state um, agreement, so that we can get the, the $316,675 from the state. So I would uh, entertain a motion. I would move to approve and authorize Brent Ring, our town manager, to sign the standard, standard ARPA grant agreement the Public-Private Stormwater Partnership with the State of Vermont, the Department of Environmental Conservation for the Morristown Jersey Way Stormwater Project as presented. I have a motion by Chris. Do I have a second? Second. A motion by Chris, second by George. Further discussion? I know this is something we've talked quite a bit about. Okay. All those in favor of the motion as presented, say aye. 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 That would be unanimous. Eighty-two Portland Street proposed parking waiver and discussion discussion of letter dated April eighth, twenty twenty-two. Um, Todd, you can correct me if where I go wrong here if I say something wrong, but it was uh, two and a half years ago that there was a lot of discussion about 82 Portland Street at the select board level in regards to um, an application that was going forward to the DRB. And the letter, the, the select board at that time, and only one member of that select board is present on this board right now, and that, that's me. Um, the select board at that time wrote a letter to the DRB expressing concerns. It's not the select board's place, nor do we have authority to tell 
the DRB what to do, but we can weigh in, and we did on this one topic. And uh, the letter, I think, rather clearly states that that board, and I still agree with this, um, see development in the downtown sector as important, housing is needed, but there were concerns about parking. And that was uh, certainly that board's understanding of the issue or one of the issues when it went to the DRB. It's my understanding, and this is April 8th, 2022. So this is again, two and a half years ago. It's my understanding that uh, this project is, that, that there is an application going back to the DRB next, I believe it's the 25th of September. And uh, so this is being brought back to this board for discussion. We've had a chance to read it. Um, do we feel similarly? And do we want to uh, readopt this letter? We don't need to rewrite it. I think what we can do is simply support it if that's the um, decision of the board. So that's why this is in front of you right now. I will say at the time, I don't believe this has changed, but parking was one of the major issues. Uh, this, uh, this particular parcel does not have a lot of on-site parking. And so the concern two and a half years ago was about where the parking would take place and that the parking would take place in the municipal parking lot. It's also my understanding that this parcel does have a permit for nine units that the DRB did grant that. So I've said a few things there, Todd, I, have I misspoken anywhere? On the whole, you're okay. Great, thank you. So I would, uh, I'd open that up for discussion. So I guess, you know, um, obviously I wasn't part of this original discussion, but you know, the general rule of thumb um, in development of parking areas, particularly public parking areas, is that the cost of a public parking space runs anywhere between 20 and $25,000, and that includes the value of the land, construction of the parking lot, um, long-term maintenance, as well as the, the value that it brings to economic development in your communities. And, you know, uh, here it says a waiver of 23 spaces. I understand that um, there's nine, I guess, already approved, but you do the math, the value of that space is pretty close to a half a million dollars. It's and essentially it's priceless for any kind of economic development piece um, in our in our village downtown. And I understand that um, the Homes Act and, you know, bylaws are lean toward um, you know, development in our downtown areas, but we also, um, we're not, there's no offset in any of this. There's, there's not a net zero loss in terms of parking. You know, if you know, they were to purchase the green space up here that's next to Walgreens and put in a parking lot that was 23 plus parking area and they wanted to do a like kind of exchange with the town, well, that's a different temperament. That's a different conversation. But um, I certainly, at this point, um, see great value in those parking spaces for the economic development piece here in the village. And I don't believe that uh, losing those spaces is in the long-term best interest of this community. Other comments? Todd, I, I sent a, a letter to, to Brent this morning, not knowing that he was there, and he did respond to me and said he was going to ask Todd to try and respond. The questions I asked, because I don't have any facts around it, is how many spaces are in that lot in total? How many, if any, have we given waivers to in the past, and, and who, who, are, who got those waivers, and, and how many spaces? So I'm just looking for some framework, and I don't know if you've had a chance to do that. I didn't see that request. Um, okay. Uh, to give you a broad overview, I would ask you not to send a similar letter. That letter was very damaging to this project and failed by one vote largely because of this letter. There is ample parking for this project. The board does have the ability to waive this, so I'd like to try to help what is a 
I'll make my apologies, a blighted property that sat there for 30 years, multiple generations at this point, get a permit and try to get developed. There's ample parking. I'm sure you all parked on Portland Street tonight. You didn't have a hard time finding spaces. There's ample parking overnight. We're artificially constraining our parking where they're overnight parking ban in the winter. We can have better policies that create more parking. We have no downtown development happening right now. You have almost no grandless growth for next year. We are in a, not a great place in terms of housing development with a housing crisis. And if your budget is tight, tight this year, it's gonna be a lot tighter next year without the 4% of grandless growth. So this project is an important project. I'd like to see something happen here. And I'd like to see the board take a different look at that letter. That letter, I don't know where the number 23 comes from. They're asking for nine spaces to be waived. Is not 23. I was going to say, I, excuse me, that because I was involved in this and I'm sitting here being confused and I was involved in this on the DRB. 23 should never be mentioned again. That it's not relevant. It's confusing yeah, to everybody. Um, because there's. So let me just explain real quick. That just got pulled from April 22nd. Great. Yeah, the letter was I understand that. Exactly. It just got pulled from there. It has no bearing on what they're asking for. I understand that, that, but okay. it's. Okay. It's okay. in this packet. Yeah. And that's from two and a half years ago. I understand that, but okay. it's still confusing that. for people. Yeah. It was a mistake then. I don't want to repeat the same mistake yeah. tonight. So yeah, this I'm 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 saying this letter should go back into the file. It was a whole other thing. We need to go Different clean. Board. That's that's all I'm saying. So the question is, um, from what Don said, uh, Todd, that they've already been approved for nine. Is right. that is so why are they revisiting it for nine they're looking again. to add nine more units so they're looking to have 18 units total gotcha. so oh, they're okay. asking for the additional nine waivers and this is not the board that does the waivers so the select board will the town was given a comment letter because they're in a butter to the project right um and the drb will consider a butter comment so you're considering whether you're going to give a butter comment to the select board and i'd really like to try to give a proactive constructive comment that helps this family get this sorry dilapidated building under development, either by their own, or if they can't develop with their own permit for 18 build 18 units, they can sell to developer as the wherewithal to actually do it, to do the project. Um, if you're trying to, if you want to do the back of the envelope math or pro forma on a nine unit building that needs probably three million bucks worth of work, you'll go broke. 18 units, you're probably not going to make much money, and so we're trying to get them at least to the to the very precipice of making a viable financial project. Without this parking waiver, they'll never do it. And to George's question earlier, I didn't mean to gloss over it, George. Almost every building in this downtown has no on-site parking. The building we're sitting in has no on-site parking. These are all pre-car buildings, horse and buggy times, tie your horse hitch to the post out the outside. There's no, so there's no parking for this building. You could argue we shouldn't be here either. All the apartments in the downtown, power play sports, seven parking spots, no on-site parking. The post office, the new one, existing one, Eight apartments, no on-site parking. Green Mountain, uh, Green, the Green Dragon restaurant, there's, there's no on-site parking. All these buildings here, there's no on-site parking. We're just asking them to be treated the same as everybody else. We have the capacity. The one difference from 2022 is I hadn't done the study again when the, when the parking lot redesign was completed, and I didn't know how much parking we have. We have more spaces now than we did then. We can accommodate their housing project. I'd ask you to provide a positive comment letter to the DRB about it. I guess my only response to that is, is that every time we allocate public parking for private use, you continue to set a precedent towards, you know, so if you've done it for uh, the Royal Housing Partnership, you've done it for the Nephew Building, and you, something else comes along that's where, let's say, uh, Pleasant uh, Street Lotto was, and you're giving away those pieces, um, I guess I'm concerned about that. And, um, and every, every municipality, Todd, who has downtown parking and has businesses that um, are, are here on the main streets, every planning commission and select board allocates, reallocates the same parking spaces for multiple businesses because the timing of their Flow of retail is different, and that's just a that's just a factor. But we're not making any more land either. I, I like I said, only counter saying the precedent was set long before any of us were in this room. Every other building downtown has offsite parking waiver, offsite parking waivers. So 
I don't see why we want to treat this one any differently, especially it's such a visible building. It's been there for a long time. It really needs our help to get across the finish line. I also think it's important to having been on, on this that the all they're giving all we're actually giving them is the ability for people to park in that lot. We're not promising them spots. They don't they can't mark it. So if they pull up and there's no parking spot, they don't park. So th that's the precedence that's been set. And I think people um, get confused thinking that, you know, these spots are going to be allocated and it's theirs. And that's not the case. Uh, correct? But, correct, yes. I mean, yeah. in other leases that we've done, uh, for example, when the power play building got redone, the, uh, the lease says that they'll seek the overnight winter parking during the parking ban months in the Copley Municipal lot. This lease could say the same. Uh, it could say if there's that parking is full. I do think this building will largely fill what we're designated for overnight parking, uh, probably to our maximum capacity or close to it. There's about 12 spaces available. They'll probably use all 12 spaces. Uh, and then there's, there's the library lot, the park and ride lot. Those spaces, overnight spaces aren't used. The Oxbow is uh, approved as overnight parking. No one parks at the Oxbow overnight. We have adequate parking. There's no reason to stand in front of, stand against this development. I, I will state for the record that this group, uh, the select board approved private use of part of that parking lot to a business. And, and so now, which I was against, I'm still against because it's the Copley Foundation. So I find it interesting that there's concern about someone housing when you gave a business the right to use the parking lot. <laughs> I find it hypocritical. Um, second of all, that parking lot is not, um, that was not the original design the DRB uh, approved. Consequently, that parking lot is, in my understanding, is in violation of our own zoning bylaws, which I'm appalled by. We would not allow any other business to do that. And I think that needs to be revisited because we might gain some parking spots. And we wouldn't have to look at those horrible big yellow things. Um, so I think there's some bigger issues going on here. Other discussion? Sorry. You ran a list of other apartments, the ones over Green, uh, Green Mountain Sports and the Mars office. building. Sorry, All those, yeah. Do any of those have approved use of that lot or are they just parking in there because no they've, they've all received the same parking waivers they've all received the same parking correct waivers. and then the board or, the, or myself as a zoning administrator give to deliver us the parking waivers you're being asked to comment on the project as a as the, as the town so i guess i would still like the answer not, not right now i'm not yeah. asking to do it off the top of your head and i'm sure <coughs> brent speak forward my letter to email to brent to you hadn't seen it as just walk not yet so just go there yeah. or didn't get sent and brent yeah. thought whatever I still would like to know how many official parking spots we've got on waiver in that lot as we sit here right now before we talk about anything else. As well as what the size of that lot is. That lot was redesigned two years ago? Correct. Because of the Lamoille Housing Partnership uh, discussion. Yeah, that was, that was my redesign. So that design added about 35 spaces to the lot and 18 overnight spaces is I think 100 and we're at 96 or 104 spaces, around 100 spaces in the lot. And we have, um, there's a parking study that I've done. We have adequate parking. We, so I'm out there at 1030 at night on January, it's 12, 12 degrees out. And myself or Matt, the village foreman's out there at 530 in the morning counting for our parking spaces. There is part, there's an adequate parking for this project. We're there, we're there every night, we're there every morning uh, in the winter during the parking ban. And again, our parking ban, the constriction we're talking about here is completely artificial. We're not handling our parking well. We're not managing it well. We're actually really constricting our downtown development and housing growth we badly need due to a bad parking policy. And even with our bad parking policy, we have added capacity for this project. I guess the only thing I would say about that is we, I mean, the DRB did already grant nine permits, nine, you know, nine units and did, did permit the parking for those nine units. Now we're back up to 18 again. So we're back up to that, you know, that number that we were close to last time, which was 23. And there's only a finite amount of parking in the village. Eventually, um, eventually we're gonna run out of parking. 
And uh, you know, we got we got projects that are planned for Pleasant Street. This is the land we purchased more parking two years ago. And so that, those are those are my concerns. Just that it already has parking, but and that these units are these units are quite small. And that was a big part of the discussion at the DRB level. Yes. So these are 18 tiny units. They're not, they're not sizable by any means. So what you're looking at in orange is the lot the town now owns at the bottom of Pleasant Street and Railroad Street. We pass it around. We traded this for a piece of the Oxbow. So the intent here, we traded a piece of the Oxbow for this, what is going to be a parking lot. And it's bordered on the north by a, sorry, Tom, a... 18 by 320, I can't remember with my glasses on, uh, easement on the north side, all on the rail trail for parking. So we have more town land for parking, and there's a V-Trans easement there for more parking along it. This is our next parking lot. So the, yes, we're not making more land off Portland Street, but there's a bunch of parking availability at the bottom of Pleasant Street. And again, we have enough parking for this project now in the existing lot. Uh, never mind a future parking lot, which is only a couple hundred yards away. And, and I think what um, we're taught is referring to also is that, oh, correct me because it's been a while that, you know, and having lived in big cities, you know, they have alternate night, uh, alternate street parking so that overnight parking is allowed on certain certain nights on different streets. We don't have that. We don't so, allow any parking on the streets. We have no parking on the streets. And only parking in a certain parts of our lot. It used to be all yeah. overnight parking there. Now we restrict it to certain yeah. corners of the lot. So, uh, you know, as as we get bigger, you know, I agree with Todd that we need to look at that, that we're really, you know, we've got all this space that we're not allowing cars, you know, to park there. For why? You know, it's... It may have been relevant at some point, but we need to re look at that um, so that we're not putting all the pressure on this one lot. Yeah. So I think there's options because I do agree we, we can't just keep giving away spots and giving away spots because eventually it's going to hurt the businesses. Um, and we've set a precedent. So how do we say no now? Um, but I think we've got to start looking at other options and on street parking overnight, you know, Todd, it happens. Mm -hmm. I would say, go ahead. The two proposed buildings on Pleasant Street, are they looking for lot, municipal lot parking? I've issued a permit for one of them and they have a parking garage. So they are, they are requesting no uh, parking waivers. And I suspect the second one, same developer, will not request any parking waivers either. He's going to do parking on site underneath the building as well. I would just say to your point, Laura, you know, there's the on-street parking is creating, again, another pinch. And uh, yeah. there's just a finite number of spaces in town. And I think at some point, no will have to be the answer. Yeah. And because uh, we, we can only provide so much parking in this village. I'm, I'm just speaking, I'm, I'm very conflicted because in one part of me would really like to see the, the area that's presently the nephew building addressed. And, and this does that. The other part of me, without the facts, it leaves me left not knowing. Todd says his capacity, but I know in the daytime, certainly on the father end, it, it, anytime I'm in that lot, the, and towards the Lamoille family, the uh, housing partnership building is less occupied. But the, the, the part that's next to what used to be the Puffer Church is jam packed. Yeah. So, Todd, I have a question. Um, currently, this request is based on their current design that they're going to want to build 18 units. So going forward, because I think there was something in there that they also want it in order to be able to, to sell it. So, you know, my concern is if we're that this file that this stays with the the lease so that if they do sell it, somebody comes in and you know, only builds nine units, but they still have 18 spots. So I, that's my concern is that it shouldn't. No, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that, Laura. So okay, your concern so is, your concern is um, you're okay because the, the permit does run with the land. 
but we're not basically saying there's 103 spots and here's everyone's, you have six spaces, right. you have four spaces. We just look at capacity. So when Matt and I are out there either at 10 o'clock at night or five o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. we're counting parking spaces and we're basically saying there is space for this project. There's 12 spaces out there. That's all they're going to need. And this project has room to go through. So we're trying to get, not have a negative comment letter sent and not have another 20 years of that building sitting there falling in. Yeah. Yeah, so we're not we're not giving them but correct yeah so so even if it but it will stay with uh, do you see my does concern run, does yeah. the land, but yeah it's not like a these people that four we're cutting up pieces of the pie it's just based on availability yeah. and right now we have the availability if you submit another negative comment letter that building's going to sit there for another 10 years if not longer it was missed by one vote last time you remember you're commenting to the board that you appoint your comments are powerful it's not just like we're submitting a butter comment letter you're basically telling the board you appoint that you're concerned about parking and they're going to be very reluctant to over, overrule the select board on this one and i'm telling you as, the, as your land use professional there's adequate parking for this project and it should go forward i'd love to see nothing more in that building get redeveloped either by the nephews or they sell it to someone who, who has the uh, ability to do it i think todd i think all of us would love to see that building you know developed a, we've had so much conversation in this town about it and um, i don't think there's anybody who disagrees with that it's just whether or not Nine, nine parking spots is enough for that building. Have we done any kind of um, survey of the businesses, the other businesses? Because uh, I've talked with several about those big yellow things um, that they all hate. Um, but <clears throat> have any businesses expressed concern about this project? And I have not gotten a single a negative about a comment letter back on this project. And Laura's right, this project is in violation of our zoning. The select board treated it kind of like it treats some of the flood rules and did it project without a permit. The clay tiles aren't legal. There's supposed to be street trees, every certain amount of parking spaces right. and you replace the clay tiles with street trees, which I've submitted a grant form work with the buck before will be okay. But um, it's all about parks, parking management. If we allow overnight parking from so let's say 6 p.m. to 7 a.m. and then it's 15 minute parking out after that, those cars aren't going to be there. It's all about managing our asset. We don't manage our asset at all right now. We have two hour parking assigned. People stay there all day. Not that it's an enforcement issue, but we haven't done anything. We have a parking. Um, it's a new select board. So I want to make sure you all see this. We've done this multiple times before, but most of you are new. We have a parking committee report. You're pointing to the parking committee. This is their report if you haven't seen it. And they have an implementation plan. The select board's approved a bunch of the plan. We've followed through on zero of them. Zero. And if we follow through in some of this, we'll be a little bit better shape today. Yeah, that's... Hopefully this is, whether this project gets a positive comment letter or not, I'd like for something to move forward on the parking committee's work because Jeff Graham and developers and different other people in town put a lot of work into this project and hopefully it's not for not. Yeah, this was interesting. So Todd, are you recommending that we have a meter made? Sorry, I just. Is that my other, other of my are, are you applying for a job? <laughs> no, I just I happened to hear the Beatles meter maid and heard the story about why Paul um, McCartney used meter maid as opposed to his term. But so meter maid was on my mind. But well, I guess I'd like to ask the board what, how they'd like to proceed on this. We had a lot of a lot of different conversation. The other question I have is is that. If the intention is to sell the building, there's no guarantee whether a developer may or may not do that building, but we're allocating parking spaces, we're intimating allocating 18 spaces total for a project that very well may not ever happen. If, if is the incentive to create these spaces for sale or is it the incentive is, is that they have a buyer that wants to do this project and that's the 18 spaces and, and i guess that would be the question for you and please join us hi julie nephew i'm the current owner of the building my father passed away a couple of years ago and i inherited it we are not intending to sell the building right. our goal is to develop it the same as we have always wanted to develop it we have never been able to get enough units in the building because of the parking issue we had full plans, a contractor, everybody ready. And the only problem was that the bank wouldn't lend us the money. At that point, it was only $1.2 million because 
with nine apartment units that wouldn't cover the cost of the debt. And they wouldn't lend us the money. It would have been done eight years ago if we had been able to do 12 units, but we couldn't because of this parking issue. The parking issue, in my opinion, there's a one unit per, one parking spot per unit developed requirement, but renters in Lamoille County, 22% of them own cars. That means that a whole lot of them don't own cars and they will not use a parking spot. You've seen that with Lamoille Housing. They got 23, 24 spots and they don't use all of the spots because a lot of the folks who live there don't have cars. We are on a bus route. We don't expect people to need cars. As for the size of the apartments, there's a very, uh, the, the most recent housing study that came out uh, in June of this year says there's a, a huge mismatch in Lamoille County, especially, there are a third of the people need a single room, single bedroom apartment, and most of the housing is two or three bedrooms. They need small apartments. We're not trying to make a huge 60 unit thing with tiny apartments. We're trying to make just enough so that people who are living at 50% of area median income, or you know, people who are living on social security and maybe making only $18,000 a year can afford to live somewhere in this neighborhood. That's all we're trying to do. We're not trying to alter the way the town is, is built. We're not trying to change uh, or, or get anything special. We're just trying to develop that building. And it's just, you know, now it's gonna cost closer to $4 million, forget the, you know, $1 million from six, six, eight years ago. It's going to cost a lot of money. And there is no way with nine apartments that it can be done. And even if I wanted to sell it to a developer, no developer can do it. Jim Levinsky and I <coughs> talked about him buying the property and he couldn't do it with nine apartments. You can't get low income housing tax credits with less than 20 or 30 apartments. You can't do it. There's no money. So, cause banks don't want to lend money. If they can't guarantee they're going to get money back and that's what it needs. Now, again, I don't think that we're gonna use all 18 spots because I think that probably we'll use closer to nine, but because the rule says I have to have one parking spot per apartment, I have to get the waiver, even if I never use them. So to answer your question, no, we are not intending to sell it. Okay, but, but until, you know, until we can do something with it, it's not going to be developed. And this board is standing in the way of it, in my opinion, if, if you write a letter like you did last time. Thanks. Talk Thanks, Julie. You. I have a, oh. I was gonna say, I have a hand up on Zoom there. Yes, Dennis. Dennis, you're muted right now. <laughs> and now you're sideways. <laughs> you're still muted. <clears throat> Now you're doing <laughs> somersaults. <laughs> Dennis, I'm going to just give the microphone to Laura here for a second and we'll come back to you. Oh, thank you. So, uh, yeah, as soon as we get you unmuted, we'll get back to you. So, Todd, can we, can we make a recommendation that this allowance is, is specific to this project? Because I, I do agree with Chris. I don't like vagueness and that you know you don't know who the next you never know what's going to ha happen you know i we want to help the nephews but at the same time we don't want to set ourselves up for because nobody knows ever knows what's going to happen so um can sure, there would not, there'd be nothing stopping you from writing a letter supporting the project uh for the uh for the lifetime that the nephew family owns the project so that would be, that'd be a nephew. wonderful letter for the drb to have and hopefully it'll help get that building here developed chris would that um take care of your concerns um, no but i, I appreciate would it the help I appreciate the answer okay um, dennis it looks like you're unmuted now yeah sorry about that my screen was not anyway um yeah dennis, dennis can you give us your full name please? brother of the owner of the building and the uh can you hear me dennis, full name. can you give us your full name please dennis nephew okay thank you uh, brother of the owner of the building can you hear me yes okay yeah i was confused by some of the arguments laid out earlier 
that started with, uh, it's not the place of the board to comment, but we're going to. Uh, the it, it was the cost of the parking spaces that were gifted to the town and endowed with a, uh, given uh, an endowment that pays for their maintenance. And no one else has been asked to buy land and trade it um, as it seems like a whole lot of restrictions are being considered or have been imposed over time on this project. And none of it seems to hold water. And I, I really think you should consider what is really the problem. And if you want development, you need to allow development. We're talking about overnight parking that would not conflict with any businesses. And as Julie pointed out, probably most of the people in the building won't have cars. So what, what are the real arguments against supporting this project as opposed to stepping in to stop it? Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. I've, I have another hand up there. Alex? Let me just get my, okay. Hi, Alex here. I live here in Morristown. And just because of the conversation that happened around um, unit size, I do want to agree, you know, um, when I was moving to Morristown, I very much would have loved to have been able to at least apply to rent a one unit bedroom. And um, that wasn't possible. And so I'm renting a bunch of extra space that I don't use for a bunch of the year. And so I think it would be great if there were one unit apartments in Morristown. Thank you, Alex. Come on up and identify yourself. I will. <laughs> Evelyn Throne, Morrisville. Um, I'm rather new to this conversation, although I have followed it somewhat. Uh, my question from someone maybe looking at it from the outside is, we're concerned about the finite amount of parking spots. And that is something that is, needs to be looked at holistically, as you've all talked about, as a, as a whole town, a whole um, parking lot, rules, regulations. But rather than saying, you know, there's nine spots already delegated, we'd like nine more, rather than saying this is a good use of those nine extra spaces, um, it seems like maybe there's a thought of holding out because bad things could happen and there doesn't seem that could happen with any any business or there would be a better use of it in the future and just from the outside i don't see a better use of it in the future i think that building is an eyesore it's a shame because there's there's pride in it it's it, you know i don't know what they're going to do with the outside but it could be a beautiful addition and we're going to have we need workers and we need people who don't have a lot of money in this town because they'll, you know, they're they're very interested in working. They're not retirees, and um, it just it seems to be holding out for the perfect ethereal thing somewhere that we're going to say that these spots are for when we have a really good thing right in front of us. Thank you, Evelyn. I just I wonder where the number nine comes from. Is it like? How do we get to the number nine? Yeah, and nine brothers and sisters. <laughs> so do you all get a parking spot? <laughs> no, that's the it's the uh, the request is for nine additional units. So that's it's one per one right now in the zoning. No, so I, that's I understand that. The nine parking. So the original so. proposal was for nine units. Is Correct. That, okay. And nine is generally the uh, the base maximum number for a smaller project that wants to avoid Act 250. The ten units trigger Act 250. So there's a okay. Most of the apartment buildings in town are nine unit apartment buildings that not trigger Act 250. So. They have a nine unit approval already, and now they've decided they need to go bigger in order to make it pencil out. So they're looking to uh, go for 18 units, which requires that an extra nine units requires an extra nine parking spots. I just, I didn't know where the nine Happy number. Thank you. If I could address that as well. The, um, when we first applied for the permit, the lot size, we were restricted to doing eight under the Morrisville zoning <coughs> board, and we got a waiver for the ninth. And in 2016, Morrisville lifted the restriction. So we could have as many units as we want, but we couldn't have as many units as we want because we had no parking. So the, 
the nine units is what we were developing when the town would only let us have nine units. And now we're saying more because it, it just can't be done with them. For the record, that was Julie. Julie Nephew again. Yeah. That's okay. Hey, uh, my name's Tom Cloutier in Marsville. There was a letter, a letter sent to the DRB two years ago uh, addressing the same problem. Signed by uh, uh, Bob Beam and Judy Bickett and Brian Callow. I think you folks tonight said that was a mistake to send that letter to the DIB. I think I'm doing the same mistake tonight, trying to influence, because whether you want to influence or not, if you write a letter to the DIB as the board, not authorizing or against this project, you are influencing, and I think it. If it's not illegal, it's unethical that you do that to the DIB. I would su suggest that you send a letter to the DIB in favor of the town development for this building here and let the DIB decide what to do with it. Don't make the same mistake you made two years ago. We need that building. We need the, the town to progress and not stay two years in the past. Let's look ahead and argue about nine parking spots, whether they're $300,000 or anything, in my opinion, is ridiculous. So let's move on with this pillar. Let DIB do the job. Tom, can and I you know that you? that oh. probably, sorry, Laura, that probably, I mean, that's what we need to decide here as a board. Do we want to do we want to take action? We don't have to take action. And when I brought this up tonight, I did say that. Uh, it's a matter of whether we, in my opinion, when we started this, whether we wanted to readopt that same letter um, or, or not. And uh, I think the fact that we've had this conversation certainly sends a message to the DRB that um, there is a little bit of uncertainty in regards to this as to, to where to go. There's still there's still the issue of parking in the village. There's still the issue of whether there's enough. Uh, there's still the issue of whether or not 300 square foot units is, is what we want downtown. Um, maybe we do, maybe we do want those. I, I'm not, it seems like, they seem like small units that could put a lot of pressure on the village, but you know, that's just, that's just, one, that's just one opinion. Go ahead. Chief, Yeah. I'd just like to say one thing. Introduce yourself. David Ring. I've lived here for 35 years. And I think part of the problem is, is the board and maybe some other people are getting hung up on private public. The, let me explain. The nephews are the private part of it, and they're funding the whole project. They're building this. The public is the one that's going to be living in these units. The public is associated with a parking lot. Uh, they're not selling these units. They're, they're gonna be renting them, I believe, if I'm, not, if I'm correct. They're not selling them. So the public is gonna be living there and the public is gonna come into the parking lot and it's first come, first serve, and it's public. So I don't see the problem. I think the big hang up is on numbers and public versus private. And I think it's kind of something you could, as a board, uh, support the fact that this is what I'm saying and, and then the DRB can look at this and say that you're not negatively putting it down in any form or manner because you are uh, supporting the public, which we all are part of, and leave it at that. Thank you, David. Now, Jerry Throne. I'm all for supporting this project, <clears throat> but I, I can't seem to get by the legal legalities of these parking spaces, what the zoning requirements are, what the zoning laws are, and what's being proposed here, and what effect that all has on how other regulations are going to be interpreted and read, and whether it, well, an attorney like, uh, where is he now? Alex could, could probably say this better, whether it's a force majeure, uh, which would uh, make parts of our zoning uh, inapplicable or would uh, keep them uh, reinstated if it was f found out that a certain portion is not being enforced. Uh, 
I have all those legal concerns. I'm fine with the project. I'd like to see the project go. But I think these legal concerns, if I don't bring them up, someone else is going to bring them up possibly. And it might happen before the DRB. I don't know that they're going to <clears throat> be in a position to be able to answer those questions. I think this is something that uh, the board needs to address as a possible uh, rock in the road, if you will. <clears throat> that it should be uh, thought out carefully as to how this is going, uh, if it goes through this way with the <clears throat> additional park, uh, uh, the town agreeing to provide the additional parking. How is that going to affect the rest of all our regulations? Thank you. And yes, the DRB is going to make that dis make this decision. It, as I said earlier, it is not our purview to make this decision. And two and a half years ago, there, the sentiment in the room was very strong that the select board needed to have an opinion and needed to express that opinion and deliver it to the DRB. And that is what happened then. I, that, I don't think that's happening tonight. But um, so I'm going to ask the board for some direction here. We don't we could have a motion. Um, we don't need a motion, but I, I just want to see what the will of the board is. Uh, do we want a motion in support of the letter from two and a half years ago? Do we want a motion regarding something else? Do we want to just let this rest, knowing that next week, next Wednesday, a week from uh, this Wednesday, it's going to go to the DRB and they're going to make their decision, which is which is their which is their decision to make. So I'm just uh, one sec, Dennis. So I just want to ask the board. Before we have too much more discussion, where would we like to go with this at well, this point? I guess I would like to make a motion that we trust our DRB since we appointed them um, and trust them to do their job. Yeah. I was on the DRB. Do we so. need to write a letter or do we just need to say that? Um, uh, I, I'm, yeah. what, whatever I it is you want to put in your motion, um, do you want it in a letter or simply as a statement? Simply as a statement. And what would that statement be? The, that um, we have appointed a DRB. Um, this is what we hired them or have appointed them to do and that we trust them um, be, that to make to move forward as they see fit. And again, having been on the DRB, there's always so many more details that they deal with on a daily basis that we do not. Um, and I have to say, having been on that board and knowing that crew, I think it's incredibly qualified, a highly qualified board. So, so, so I'm going to say you made a motion. Yeah. I'll yes. let you. I'll let you discuss it some more. Do I have a second for that motion? I'll second that. So I have a motion by Laura and a second by Richard. Now discussion. Anything else you want to add? No, I think I, I think I got it in the wrong spot, but I think it was heard. Okay. <laughs> Discussion from the board? I have a comment. I could support that motion if it was focused on the nephew property. I, I think it's, it's too broad, Laura. Oh, yeah, I agree. I think so. if, if, if what you said said, as it pertains to the nephew property, let the DRB do their job. That's fine. But I, I don't want to give up the select board's right to have an opinion on the DR board's actions in the future with a blanket motion that says just let the DRB do their, their job. If we're not comfortable with the DRB, I want to have the right for the select board to say we're not comfortable with the DRB. And, and, and I think your motion is too broad as stated. Personally. Would you like to withdraw your motion and restate it? And we could withdraw this the um, second? I will withdraw it because I do agree that we so need to be more. Withdrawing specific. Withdrawing the motion, yeah. withdrawing the second? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Would you like to restate that? Oh, let's see if I can do this here. Um, the, I would like to make a motion that the, um, that the select board support the DRB in a decision specific to the nephew building um, uh, on, the, on the parking issue. Did that? Did so I? support the DRB making the decision. Making a ruling on uh, the parking waiver for the nephew building. Was, was that, does that work, George? Uh, I'm not sure. Can you read it again? So I have a uh, motion is to, that the select board would support the DRB 
in making the decision on the parking waiver for the nephew building. Could have been. I I, I'm going to look for a second first. Second. So I have a second from Richard. So I have a motion by Laura, <coughs> second by Richard. Judy, do you feel like you have that motion? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Go ahead, Chris. I guess my only concern is, is that um, we're walking down a path of of selectively weighing in or not on on the legislative body's responsibility mm -hmm. to take care of the global picture for this community. And quite frankly, I think that that motion basically punts it for this, but does it set a precedent moving forward? I just, I, I'm yeah. uncomfortable. I think that we have a legislative responsibility, <clears throat> elected responsibility to make a decision. And this decision just seems like well, you, you don't want to make a decision, so we're going to punt it to the DRB. Well, I, I don't see it as punting. We appointed them to do, and this is their job, and it's a highly qualified. So I think by us stepping in, we're usurping them and undermining them. You know, if we don't trust them, then we need to reappoint. I'm if we're going to we step in and overrule them every time, it's I'm not, not saying that we don't trust them, but I think that having an opinion on um, yeah. not this project, but the more global view of what it means, um, it's a philosophy of how you want to approach um, the parking pro issues and long term vision. Yeah. And I just think that um, we got elected to make decisions, and I think that this is a soft decision just based on trying to placate uh, this particular project and not taking into consideration uh, a broader view. But I, I've said enough tonight. I know I'm going to vote, so I just. And, and I guess I'm, you know, as this conversation's gone on, I'm wondering if any action is needed. Thanks. You know, that. Our conversation here, our discussion, the public's discussion, the board's discussion, the public the discussion we've had from Zoom. Clearly, the DRB is going to hear about this. They're going to know we had this yeah. this discussion. Um, and unlike unlike two and a half years ago, where there was uh, a, a pretty pretty unanimous um, decision made by the board, and I'm not sure what all went into that creating that environment and that climate and that atmosphere, even though I was there, but I, you know, there was clear in the background, there was this uh, need for the select board to uh, chime in on this, on this topic. And we did, and it was unanimous. I'm not sensing a unanimous situation tonight. And now it's, I'm wondering if we might be doing more harm in having any action versus having no action at all. And just, we've said what we needed to say. We've certainly <laughs> listened to a lot of public input. Um, we, we're, I've said it at least twice now very clearly. We're not gonna tell the DRB what to do because we can't, we certainly shouldn't ethically and statutorily we can't do it. Um, I wonder if we've done enough already I wonder if there, enough has been done. It's, it's, it is, we do trust our DRB. Mm -hmm. We all trust our DRB. Mm -hmm. They, frankly, they are the ones that ultimately have the difficult decision to make. And uh, thankfully, there's a lot of them there. and There's a lot of voices there that are going to weigh in on this, on this project. So I guess that's where I'm going with this is, uh, is to maybe just let this be. Because if we're not going to write a letter that's going to be unanimous, that we're all going to agree with, given this. It's one thing to make, to make a motion, for the select board to make a motion that we can statutorily do and should do like we've done tonight because no one else can make it. That's clearly our job. It's not our job to necessarily weigh in an opinion on everything that happens in town. And I'm beginning to wonder if 
we shouldn't just let this rest if that's all we're going to do and have a split decision and the, and you know what what what's the end what's the end result of yeah. that so i guess i guess i'll just throw that out there and let others comment on it we do have a motion on the table um but we don't need to vote on it right now do we need would we need a motion to take no action or just no action means nothing's happening well we could just simply withdraw the motion withdraw the second and be done i'll draw my second i'll withdraw <clears throat> i think we need to do something to make that building viable there's we've given parking waivers to to the housing partnership and i this it's been 30 years of dilapidation that's that's my opinion on, on that we we have to do something i think we have to let the drb make a decision on what's right and todd's point about when this community was built about horses tied to the to the pole we're not there anymore so we have to do the best we can do but we also have to support development and forward progress in our downtown and we've certainly raised the issues and you know for the select board or the uh, drb members that are going to listen to this conversation they're they're going to hear that yeah it's it's not black and white certainly as much as we you know might have strong opinions one way or the other it's still not black and white it's, and it's pretty great todd correct me uh, most of that drb the current sitting drb were in on this original so they have historical knowledge of what has gone on correct, correct. and they could not listen to this conversation be ex parte so oh, this is something they can't listen to if they did listen yeah. to this they have to recuse themselves from the hearing yeah. so so thank you todd that actually makes uh, again because i was part of that group uh, i'm calm you know i i'm glad that we have historical knowledge on that board so this is not a just a random yeah. thought Okay, if the board is okay with it, I'm going to move on. Old business. Do we have any old business? None. Dennis is still hanging out. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Dennis. Yeah. I'm sorry. Dennis? Yeah, uh, so um, the conversation moved along. Uh, I'm sorry if it's a little late. I think it moved on a little too early. Um, the thing is, that when Tom said that at this point you've You've basically shot across a uh, laid a shot across the bow of the DRB. As Don keeps saying, they're going to get the message. They know what you're saying, and even if they are not allowed to listen to the meeting, they will hear about it. At this point, anybody with you know any reasonable person would say the DRB has been told that. Two or three of their bosses who can fire them because you keep talking about that, that you can reappoint them, that two or three of their bosses might be unhappy with the decision. I think at this point you've painted yourself into a corner where just leaving it lie is the same as saying, yeah, we support our letter from before. We're just not going to say it. I think you need to take an action to retract the letter from before or you are de facto repeating it. Can we legally retract it because we none of us signed it? No, we can't. We can't, yeah, we can't retract it because we aren't the ones who sent it. This is a whole new... The select board sent it. Whoever's on the select board represent, represents the town. The select board, if any one of you changes tomorrow, it's still the select board. I don't see how we rescind an action of the prior board. I don't either. Anybody else? I think I think the as you framed the summary at the end on is, is the right summary. We've had we've had mixed comments conversation about this. It's hard to come down to a a conclusion that's going to be anything but a divided conclusion. And I think we should just let the DRB take it from here. We we've, we've discussed it. And the decision is not to, not to pursue any further action. Okay, I agree. <clears throat> Come on up to the microphone. Is Laura Green, Morrisville, is there a way you can just state that that previous late letter is something that, that you would not have, that's not your opinion now? 
I, would that make any difference? That would be the same as retracting it. Yeah, I, okay. I think we've already agreed that we don't want to do that. Yeah. And that really was a whole different situation. And I, I, I think we need, for the nephews, need to keep it clean. That, and so that folks, things aren't confused. <coughs> this is, this should be presented as a, this is a new project, you know? That's the way I see it. No. Okay. So I'm gonna move on. Uh, no old business. Uh, approving the warrants. I would move to approve the warrants. Okay, so I have a motion to approve the warrants. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion by Chris and a second by Richard. Um, Jason, I have one question since you happen to be here. I saw a bill for ammunition. Just out of curiosity, um, how, how much ammunition, I mean, is there target shooting practice that goes on? Um, right. We, we, uh, Train twice a year. Okay. And you have 14 officers, so okay. we spend about 2800 to $3,000 a year in ammunition for that. Thank you. That was for my education. I was like, you know, I hear a lot of shooting, but I think it's hunting guns. Yeah, no, we, go, <laughs> we go to the range twice a year. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion about the warrants? Okay. All those in favor of approving the warrants? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> that would be unanimous. So, community comments. Please come up to the microphone and identify yourself. Hi, I'm Julie Nephew. I wanted to uh, let everyone know that there's an opportunity for Morrisville to apply for the Section 108 HUD Legacy Grant. It, it was, it's an opportunity for the town to tell HUD that you are interested in potentially starting a loan fund that would be very flexible and you could be using it for municipal, public, private, any uses you want to, um, but it makes it easier to do development because it's such a flexible loan program. You have to put your uh, application in by the beginning of November. I'd be happy to help you with that if you want help with that. Um, and then you don't have to have any particular project in mind. You can have it as an open project or you can have a specific project in mind. So if you have, you know, you want to get your sidewalks done or whatever, you can get those done uh, and with very low, low interest and flexible payment plan kinds of grant funds from the, from the feds. Um, so that is the Section 108 HUD legacy program. I sent information to Brent about a week or two about this, but I wanted the board to know because the board is obviously the one that's got to make the decision and it's got to be made by November. Julie, Thanks, Julie. Julie, just a, Julie, just a question for you. Is this, um, this grant, is this, is the intention that it becomes a revolving loan? It can be a revolving loan fund. It can be, uh, there's a lot of different ways to set it up. It can be used to develop any portion of the town that you want to work with it. Right, so, so it's, it can, it's not a one and done. It's no, no, no. And uh, it, it would require eventually getting some approval from the state, but the municipality is the one that has to apply for it. Is there matching funds that have to go into it? I don't believe so, except from the state potentially, because okay. it's, it's a CDBG, uh, Community Development Block Grant okay. program. But this adds a new layer of, of funding on, and on to the other Community Development Block run. Grant, and you can use it with home funds, you can use it with low income housing tax credits, you could use it with a lot of different kinds of HUD and um, other federal grants. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Come on up. My name is Tony Cody, Cody Hill. Tom. It's not Herman Munster. It is Herman. So I want this board to know that I paid Alan Ward $500 to fix my ditch that the town's responsible for. I guess I'm gonna eat it because Brent said he ain't paying for it and you guys aren't gonna pay for it. So I don't think it's right, but the water's running now everywhere is except over the road where the, the culvert that they put in is that much higher than where the water can get out. So we still got set in water. 
but it's been six years and I had to do something because there's been two feet of water in that ditch for three, four, five years, but it's running now. Okay. I'm sorry you guys missed me for the last few weeks. We didn't. Mr. Thank you, Tony. Other community comments? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to move on to the schedule. We have next Monday um, a select board charter public hearing. Because we are considering adopting a charter, we must have two public hearings. That's statute. So we're going to have the first of those on Monday, September 23rd. We're going to have the second of those on uh, Monday, September 30th. September 30th, we'll also have a special select board meeting to sign the resolution in the morning for the local election that's coming up in November. And then uh, also coming up, got a bunch of meetings coming up in uh, Thursday, October 3rd, is a uh, special select board meeting. And that will be to uh, provide information regarding the other local articles that will be on the ballot, namely the uh, financing for Jersey Heights, the Jersey Heights project, and the consideration of the special tax assessment district in Jersey Heights. There'll be a regular select board meeting on uh, Monday, October 7th. By the way, those special select board meetings uh, are will be at six o'clock and they'll be at the wing center uh, that's the october 3rd meeting and the yeah. october 9th meeting will be a second special meeting to continue that discussion regarding the uh, <clears throat> articles the local articles and possibly we have tentatively set up a meeting for october 15th uh, should we think we need it to continue that conversation regarding those uh, those local uh, articles but at the last meeting, we were thinking we probably wouldn't need that. I'd also just remind the board that on the 3rd and the 9th, we could use some help setting that meeting up. There's a bunch of chairs that will need to be put out at the Wing Center. So those are upcoming meetings. If there's any questions about that, did I cover the 7th? Yeah, the 7th, I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll just be at our next regular select board meeting. Thank you, George. Other business? None. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I have a motion to adjourn. I have a, a motion by Chris and a second by Richard. All those in favor of adjournment? Aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. Thank you, folks.